Alrighty folks, monthly update for February 2023, which means we're another month to, another month closer to the Rugby World Cup. It's pretty scary how close we are getting. We are even closer to the Six Nations, which kicks off this weekend. We do have a Super Brew pool. If you know your predictions, get in with the old Super Brew. I do love uh, the old predictions game. I feel like the key with Six Nations is to pick close. Because the games are usually pretty close. Some of the other competitions you need to pick blowouts, which can be a bit harder. But anyway, Six Nations not too far away. But for the monthly update for February, we're going to look back at January, what was going on. Traditionally a slightly quieter period in the old rugby goings on. Because, you know, the internationals are all done. The Six Nations hasn't started. Super Rugby's not on. You've got, you know, the URC the Premiership Top 14 going on. Uh, Japanese rugby's underway. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's not a quite the whiz-bang that we get uh, whenever the inter international's on, to be honest. Like, down here in NZ, rugby's not that much in the news at the moment. It's uh, it's not the season for it, although um, I know for you guys up north, club scene still goes on pretty, uh, pretty full-on. Um, stats and thanks for the month of uh, January. The, uh, the two biggest videos were the Irish squad getting announced and the old... Six Nations foreign-born players one. Always a bit of a controversial one, that one. Um, as I always mention, the people seem to generally differ in their um, in their takes on that topic. I find it uh, a pretty interesting one. But um, yeah, not surprising with the Six Nations on the horizon viewing audience. UK takes the number one spot for January. Ireland 2, South Africa 3, Australia 4, New Zealand 5. So that's what I'm talking about, about the Southern Hemisphere Maybe not being quite as uh, switched on with the old rugby season as um, as other times of the year. And I should say, it was an interesting month with January because I had a video kind of demonetized. YouTube flagged one of my videos as inappropriate, which has happened every now and again on a live stream. Because on the live streams, when I got a few beers going, um, more likely to maybe drop a few uh less than g-rated comments you know on these videos I tend to keep it pretty g-rated because i know some of you folks watch with the kiddies around or in the car or something like that but um yeah the italy depth chart for whatever it was got flagged for being hateful and um having foul language basically which was surprising because i don't think i swore but it seems like a new zealand guy speaking a kind of new zealandy english well not that i think i have a particularly heavy new zealand accent um Speaking Italian names gets misinterpreted by Google to translate and then uh, the people who review it, literal humans, two of them, said it was inappropriate. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a bizarre situation. There's a few, if you look at the auto-generated subtitles, there's a few words which, Italian names especially, may have been translated or interpreted as something a little bit offensive, but they're just names, I promise, they're just Italian names, I wasn't swearing at nobody. Um, thanks for you guys for, for watching along in January, like I said, it's traditionally a bit of a, a bit of a slow month, but um, I'm still always getting into the games, getting up in the morning and watching the old URC and the Premiership, um, don't watch any top 14 sadly, but um, keeps me out of trouble. Anyway, during those months, I've had my boy home, uh, school holidays for the entire month of uh, Jan, supposed to be back at school today being the first of feb but with the floods we've had in auckland school's been cancelled for the week so i've still got him at home uh, for a few more days he's been really good we've been going out to the park and whatnot chucking a ball around which has been pretty good um uh, but yeah thanks for you guys man watching and subscribing and liking love it all plus these folks the patrons who support the channel i gotta give these guys a big shout out every month uh especially angus jack McHugh, and michael daly um, but literally all these people here uh, keep this channel afloat. We're a pretty small but regular channel and uh, the patrons certainly help out. Do a few extra videos uh, for the old Patreon community as well. If you want to join in with these lovely people, uh, check the link down in the description to, uh, to Patreon. Feel free to sign up. There's a few different options there. We've had a few people sign up in Jan actually. John Mead, Tom Armstrong, Mr. Mark, Noel Moore, Dylan Hobbs all signed up, which was uh, a big one. I hope you guys... You guys must have got some Christmas bonuses or something, but cheers, uh, folks, for signing up. And also Chris O'Connell and Kieran O'Brien uh, both up their pledges on Patreon. So, man, it's been a, a fantastic month. And I should say, uh, I put out a bit of a whinge, to be honest, when the Italian depth chart got its demonetization. I made one cent off it from YouTube's... No, 50 cents. 50 cents from YouTube premium um, 
viewers so uh a few people did the whole buy me a coffee thing buy me a beer so uh thank you guys for that it made me made me feel a bit better because it's i don't know it sucks when you feel like you've been wronged there was nothing wrong with that video the italian depth chart video was never going to be a smashing success of views or anything but i put a bit of work into it and I like to feel like i get more of the reward than 50 cents but anyway maybe two better than two cents i guess anyway uh, but yeah cheers to all you people thanks for being along and um, man, we are getting closer to the World Cup, like I mentioned. A few news stories going on. The first one's a bit of a negative one, sadly. Um, but I guess it's a right result. Man, I don't follow it that closely. I've been, I read a few of the articles and watched a few of the kind of interviews. There's been some uh, allegations in, uh, in Welsh rugby about a pretty toxic environment, especially towards uh, some of the female staff, which just, man, come on, we're, in, we're at the time 2022. Now 2023, this is the stuff that you can't be having now. Like your head's got to roll. And uh, the Welsh CEO, Steve Phillips, uh, has stepped down. I guess ultimately when you've got an organization like that, the buck stops with whoever's at the top. So um, yeah, man, you can't turn a blind eye to that kind of nonsense that needs to it needs to be dealt with and gone. So that seems like the right, the right thing. I'm always cautious a little bit about just uh, you know jumping on the social media bandwagon about wanting to see heads roll without you know because as i said it's still allegations at the moment but i mean it does sound like there's um yeah there's a pretty toxic environment there so i know welsh fans uh tend to give the welsh rugby union a fair bit of stick anyway for their management of the provinces and financial management and overcharging and ticket prices and whatnot so from what i hear from you guys it sounds like they uh, could use a bit of an overhaul anyway, so maybe this is a chance to get a bit of that done. But um, yeah, that stuff can't fly. So yeah, he stepped down and we will see what happens with Welsh Rugby going forward. Hopefully no more of that crap, please. Um, Evan Etzebeth, in a more positive news story, snubbed for a World Player of the Year nomination by World Rugby. He managed to get nominated by the South African Rugby Union for south african player of the year and he ended up winning it so i'm pretty pleased for him you guys know me i'm a real stats guy i watch a decent amount of rugby and uh Eben was immense last year his non-nomination for that award seemed like a bit of a travesty him and Adi savia the obvious ones and they were both pretty freakish in terms of their stats so um yeah i feel good for him that he managed to uh to get a hold of that award obviously it's not the same as a world player of the year award but it's always nice to get the kind of recognition uh, of your peers and your fellow countrymen, right? So, um, yeah, I feel good for uh, for Evan, given the year he had to get a bit of, uh, I don't know, get a bit of recognition. What can I say? Outside of me just lauding him, which is probably not worth that much. And uh, the last one, Eddie Jones, the new or resuming Wallabies coach, has given his first press conference and like i say january is a bit of a quiet month down here and in australia as well in terms of rugby union stuff so there wasn't that much kind of meat in the press conference it was largely talking about building and wanting to get better crowds and getting better engagement and you know he's like 160 odd days he said until his first wallabies game so there's not a lot of concrete stuff he could say he's talking about wanting to pick players based on super rugby form uh, but it's good to see Eddie front in the press conference. He's clearly really emotional to be back and uh, happy to be you know, back in Australia. And it means a lot to him. And um, I hope he does well. I hope he gets more eyeballs on uh, Aussie rugby. I hope he picks a really competitive side. I hope he gives the All Blacks a run for, for their money and the, and the bled is low. And um, yeah, builds up that rivalry. He certainly talks a good game. They're obviously talking about the Rugby World Cup being their target and they want to win it. Um, based on what we saw last year from the Aussies, like in some games they weren't that far off the pace, other games they looked pretty ordinary, but they had horrendous injuries. So yeah, it'll be an interesting one. He's talking about wanting to play basically attractive rugby, but winning rugby. So yeah, like I said, there's not that much meat in it, but it's to be expected with a rugby press conference in the middle of summer for um, for Australian rugby. So yeah, either way. We'll see what happens. You guys let us know your thoughts. What do you think about those uh, three bits of news? There's been other stuff going on. Feel free um, to just, you know, chuck your thoughts in the comments. Cheers for all you guys for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. 
because the numbers are always like the majority of people haven't subscribed. So if you could, I'd appreciate it. Don't ask for it that often. Uh, but yeah, as I said, cheers for commenting, subscribing, liking, watching videos to all the patrons. Cheers. And um, yes, I will talk to you guys again soon. See you later.